and there was some confusion as to what the requirements were going to be, and you've been digging deeper into it. Is that correct? Yeah. So uh, prior to July 3rd, July 3rd, 2018, uh, the residents and businesses owned their own grinder pumps. They maintained them. Uh, the town maintained and owned the force main that it connected to. Uh, July 3rd, 2018, uh, apparently the DC uh, changed this ruling uh, and are encouraging uh, towns to take ownership, maintenance, replacement, uh, easement of all the grinder pumps. We did not receive the letter until early uh, in 2020. Is there a difference between encouraging and requiring? Well, pretty much requiring. Okay. It really is. Uh, we, this has created confusion to everyone in the region. Uh, we met with uh, numerous towns, Aronicoit, uh, Pittsburgh, Brighton, Penfield, uh, and to try to come up with a uh, strategy for this, uh, Penfield does not have as many grinders as we do. We have uh, 159. Uh, Penfield's approach is to uh, not allow any grinders, grinder pumps uh, within their community anymore. Should we back up for a minute and explain to people who might be watching why a grinder pump is necessary? We should. Uh, so a grinder pump is a small, uh, small grinder pump station uh, that serves a, a house or a business uh, that is we can't get uh, due to due to topography, uh, can't get gravity sewer to. So, thank you. So, one of the other towns, uh, Ronacoit, uh, they actually pushed back on that and uh, got a uh, reprieve from the DEC to continue doing business as they have been doing and as the town of Webster has been doing. Uh, the maintenance and responsibility install and all of that uh, stays with the resident or the business. Uh, the town stocks uh, X number of grinder pumps in case of emergency and it is business as usual. The edict from the DC stated that anything July 3rd forward would need to be covered. Any new grinders moving forward would need to be covered and purchased and maintained by the town. That would then leave anyone who currently has grinder pumps prior to July 3rd on their own. You can see the problem where, well, the town may take care of these and pay for these. Those prior to July 3rd, you're on your own. Uh, in addition to that, it would really put a burden on the sewer department. Uh, we would have to staff up for that. We'd be on 24-hour call for these. We would need a full repair shop in our facility. We would need to stock many, many more units. Uh, then there comes the question of, okay, if we're responsible for these, what if there's a power outage? Are we then responsible for powering these things in a power outage? So uh, the, the cost just grows and grows and grows. Um, so asking for a little guidance, my opinion, would be uh, really just follow around the court's lead, draft a letter back to the DC explaining those reasons why, and continue doing business as usual. Um, Has the letter gone out yet? <laughs> I, I, I second the motion. I, I, so when Armand Coit sent that letter, did the DEC get back to them and say, yeah, okay? They did. Well, then we need to send a letter. Okay. Next. John, what do you think? Uh, I agree. I mean, Absolutely. We at least have to try that. Okay. I just thought an important issue that, you know. No, I appreciate that you're no, bringing that to our attention. And I'm, I'm, thank did you. you ever hear, did you ever hear the reasoning for this edict that came down? Because what's been... What's been happening has been working well. It has been working well. And, and the only theory that we have is uh, downstate there seems to be, you know, uh, bigger spills and this and that. But with these with these grinder pumps, and we'll use E1 as a 
manufacturer that's widely used in this area, they're sealed units. Um, they're trying to minimize spills, but I think they're going, in my opinion, this isn't the avenue. That's the only thing. We really didn't get a clear answer as to why. Because they, they have to understand how cost prohibitive this is, would, how it would be to us. Just the increase in the staffing and the, just that they have the ability to service all these is... It, absolutely. Uh, we would then have to start creating funds in different districts uh, that they would start having to pay into to start to fund these areas. The question and, would be who's going to pay to. Absolutely. And, and who's going to install. Uh, that, again, <laughs> that would all... Yeah. Those responsibilities... Uh, this is something in terms of a letter going to the DEC. Is it a request or is it... Uh, a supplication. Uh, our our letter to them. Yeah. It's request dictating, not uh, explaining why. It just would be. Okay, so they could come, they could come from you. I would write the letter with your review. Absolutely. Okay. No, but I mean that would be from yes. you though. Yes. Okay. That's fine. So I don't think we need a resolution on that. Right. No. You're just directing. No. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, you know, sharing information, giving a little guidance, and where yeah. the town wants to go. With no, thank you. I appreciate Thanks. that because this did come up earlier, close to maybe a year ago when we discussed this, that mm -hmm. um, we thought we were moving in one direction, and we said, all right, hold the phone. We need to look into this a little bit more. So yeah, absolutely. Thank you, know, you for if, doing if that. If it went the other way, it'd be quite costly for the town. Yes, yeah, and that's the direction we were headed in at one point. Absolutely. Then you know, I could understand if there was a problem. There has not been one. Everything's been running as designed. Mm -hmm. Well, it could be yet another example of downstate driving the bus. It, it could be. Again, never really got a clear answer as to mm -hmm. why why they created this. Curious as to how Penfield has changed design standards so that they don't require pumps at all. Can they do everything gravity feed? They can do. They, where we have 159, and I don't have the numbers, I think they have less than 20. Okay. So they can do that. They just. Our, our, in our topography is it's much different than just general. Allow it. There was an, an, an immense amount of property on the east side of Webster that was not developable other than large lot and above ground uh, raised beds because it's all rock. Yeah. With the invention of these pumps, now everything is serviceable, everything. So all the land is open for development. Obviously for them, I mean, they do send a lot of, a lot of waste towards us, but obviously they're, they're not, they don't have the same problem we have. No, they don't have the topography issue, and quite honestly, we'd rather see a grinder pump go in than a septic system because it's much better for the environment, right. it's much more controlled. Uh, if there's an issue, uh, you know, 10, 15 years, quickly replaceable. Mm -hmm. So it's a great option for those that can't connect gravity sewer. Right. Obviously, the preference is gravity sewer, but if you can't, it's a you know, great option to be. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there any more discussion about that? We'll draft the letter and move on. Good. Um, the second agenda item features, again, Art Patron, on the potential Lake Road sewer project. Correct. So phase two of the county uh, restructuring that Lake Road uh, will be uh, the western portion of Lake uh, between east of Osborne. So that area does not have gravity sewers. Uh, in the past, residents have called and inquired about gravity sewers. Uh, prior to Monroe County rebuilding the road, it'd be an ideal time, and probably about the best time, to look at installing gravity sewers uh, between Bosburg and Shipbuilders Creek. It encompasses approximately 117 houses where right now they have no option. Uh, it's a, the county project is a two-year project. They wouldn't get to that section until 2022. That would give us time to start the process now and get the work done next fall, next summer. So if we want to get gravity sewers to those 117 homes, now's the time. Between 
The Fassbender and Shipbuilder is correct. Yeah. Or, refresh my memory, are not sewer district extensions brought to us by the resident? You're absolutely right, they are. And we do not go out and solicit doing those? You're absolutely correct. So I guess my question is, have you had people come into you and ask to form a district? They have in the past. In the past. You yeah, absolutely, they have in the past. And the reason I'm here is because of the timing with, with the uh, county road project. So we, we did address this with another portion of Lake Road that was redone just a couple years ago. Correct. And what did we do at that time? Uh, it did not pass. Uh, no, I, re I remember, but how, did, how was it initiated? Uh, it was initiated. We did have some uh, initiation by the residents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the residents between Vosburgh and shipbuilders are aware that this construction is going to be done? Maybe. I can't answer that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how the county communicated that out. Okay. Well, the last thing we want is for them not to be aware until it's time to put shovels in the ground, so to speak, and then come to us and ask that because it's going to be too late. Correct. What was the cost? Well, well, it's, never it's, it's, it's never too late. No, it would never be too late. It would just might cost them more money. Oh, well, yes. And it would destroy the road. Right. Well, those things in my mind are... Well, I, I don't... They, they certainly would affect the decision. I guess my position is we don't go out and solicit for creations of districts. So if there's enough resident input... What's enough? Well, you got, they got to have 50%. Well... Well, that, their vote is 50%. They don't have to have 50% asking for it, do they? They have to have a petition signed with 50% of the homeowners. 50% mm -hmm. plus one. The petition has to have that? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, hopefully some of them are watching tonight. And we'll <laughs> I mean, I guess we could send a letter out and say, hey, look, there's going to be construction... Are you interested in sewers? If you are, you got to get a petition together with 50 plus percent and send it to the town. Yeah. We'll get a call, we'll do a cost evaluation and see if it's just you know cost per hood or not. Just describe to them the, the situation. The new road is going to be built in two years, and if you're if there's interest in a new if there's interest by the residents in a sewage di sewage treatment dis district sewage district Correct. that they need to come forward soon. If not. It will be much more complicated at a later date. Absolutely, and I think that's that's again, in the past, people have you know called, uh, expecting interest, expressing interest. So that would be the first step. If we get 51 percent of the residents that want to move forward with some engineering, then we go from there. I, I would, this, would this have to include a new pump station, or would all that, be, or would the Shipbuilders Creek pump station be able to handle it? I would leave that to the engineer, to so the initial engineering. I would rather be, unless there's a legal reason for us not to, I would rather be proactive with this and inform the residents I of what, of what the process is, it, that they would need 50% plus one, and what they would need to do. Then they can decide amongst themselves whether they want to move it forward. Yeah. I don't think there's a legal aspect to it. I think the purpose of us taking that stance was... Uh, because we had, um, we had a sewage treatment plant that was reaching capacity, and so it was not our intent to search for more clients, search yeah. more, for more people. Um, but if they came to them, we didn't turn them down either. We just didn't actively search out. So who bears the cost of construction? The, the initial the initial engineering, which is very minimal, is uh, borne by the town. Okay. And then, uh, if the once the costs are uh, shared with the residents, and they again fifty plus one, if they vote to move forward, uh, that is dispersed among uh, all those residents. Okay. So I'm going to ask another question also along the same lines. So let's just say, for example, that they decide not to do it now but they decide to do it later. They get their 50 plus one after the project is done. 
did they share the burden of the cost of tearing up the road and redoing it also? Absolutely. Okay. That is all, yeah, all the construction uh, is borne by the residents. So this could save them significant dollars by not having to rip up the road. So I think it's, <laughs> I absolutely agree with um, Councilwoman Cataldi as far as notifying them of not only the process, but what's involved in sharing the burden of cost so that they're aware of it. Because if we don't explain to them that they're going to have to share the burden of cost, you're going to be getting phone calls. Well, who's paying for this? So as much more information is better than less, I would suggest. So, and, and, I, and I agree, going back to Councilman Bean and Councilman Abbott's point, and which I'm very conscious of, how do we navigate going forward with that letter? To the, uh, to the, the residents. residents? There actually is generally precedent for this. I mean, you, they need to be contacted. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Contact them, say, if you want to. I mean, we can offer some assistance in terms of what they need. Tell them what they need. They need a petition requesting a, the, uh, an extension to the sewer district. Okay. And then, you know, we'll give them an idea, or you will give them an idea of exactly the uh, the areas, the addresses that are to be affected. Correct, yes. Yeah, that's fine. Absolutely. Okay. And we did discuss the engineering costs because I had asked you about that when we spoke okay. earlier. Um, I am the liaison to your department, and that's why we had a previous conversation about it. Um, and those engineering costs are in our budget, sort of as a contingency engineering line for projects such as this. So correct. it's something we do budget for. Correct. The initial engineering, which again is, is minimal, uh, it, it's enough to give uh, some estimated costs uh, so mm -hmm. the residents can then vote. It's the cost that they vote on. It, correct. Do we need some sort of resolution for this, Charlie? Mm -hmm. No, because we're not actually seeking the... We're not, we're not seeking, seeking any action. We're, we're, we're not making the motion to go ahead and, mm -hmm. which the board could do if they wanted to, but traditionally we don't. Okay. Especially considering the expense, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, I don't think you need a resolution. I think uh, basically what what uh, Mr. Patron's talking about is, uh, and the board is uh, consenting to, is a, uh, a, basically a letter to see if there's interest in this. Okay. Right? That is it, explain yeah. the reason why. Yeah, and yeah, if they the want to go ahead, then they take the next step. They exactly. understand that it's going to be mostly the cost that is going to be on them. And um, it's not a question of selling it to them, just a question of saying, look, do you want this? I think most people want it, but, you know. If you want to do with this, what you have to do? Yeah. Yeah. And if they don't get 50%, 51% petition, then it dies right there. Right. And, and the other thing we discussed when we first talked about this, we thought this project was going to begin next summer. And we found out that we actually had a little more time on this to, to handle it more appropriately. We do. Um, we absolutely do. Mm -hmm. But that being said, we still want to drive this now right. so we can get, if it moves forward, uh, obviously with COVID, there's some uh, real uh, challenges mm -hmm. uh, with getting uh, people together, getting signatures, things like that, uh, conveying the information. I think getting some bids out so the work can be done next year. Okay. All right, so I would say uh, draft that letter. And you know the addresses it needs to go to, correct? That we do. you got some writing to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, that sounds good. Thanks Thank you for, thanks for bringing it to our attention. Appreciate it. And I do hope some of the residents are watching tonight to hear the discussion about it. Um, certainly they'll be able to see it. And if they are, they can call the sewer department, uh, share their uh, interest at 265-0505. 265. 0505. 0505. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, those are the only two agenda items we have on our workshop tonight. Does anybody have anything else to add? No. I only have one thing. I did send an, an email to the mayor this morning because I wondered if they were still holding the 9-11 memorial ceremony that's held annually at the gazebo in the village and I found out in case anyone else wonders that it is not being held this year they felt that due to COVID restrictions it was too difficult to gather people gather the band and all of that so unfortunately we will not be uh, 
not be attending that this year, but it's, we certainly still hold the memory dear in our hearts and take a moment to think about all those lives lost. And barring any other comments, I will adjourn the meeting. Thank you all. <laughs>